Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Birthday shout out to my number one Sig Tig, Rowan Trap. Happy birthday to you, big guy. Nazi versus trans? Eee. Pedo lives matter. And pride equals loser? <laughs> Welcome. You're here with the Big Sig Tig. And again, happy birthday, Rowan Trap. Thank you for being a, uh, a watcher, a viewer for so long. Happy birthday to you. Well, what's going on? Boom. The Institute for Sexual Research in Berlin would be a century old if it hadn't fallen victim to Nazi ideology. I mean, I never thought I would thank the Nazis for anything. But, like, you know, removing something like that and tearing it down, uh, you might get a pat on the back for that one. Here's an image of a bunch of alternative lifestyle leading people. Costume party. Yeah, right. Uh, late one night on the cusp of the 20th century, Magnus Hirschfeld, a young doctor, found a soldier on the doorstep of his practice in Germany. Distraught and agitated, the man had come to confess himself in yearning. A word used to refer to homosexual men. It explained the cover of darkness to speak of such things was dangerous business. The infamous paragraph 175 in the German Criminal Code made homosexuality illegal. A man so accused could be stripped of his ranks and titles and thrown in jail. Hirschfeld understood the soldier's plight. He was himself both a homosexual and Jewish and did his best to comfort his patient. But the soldier had already made up his mind. It was the eve of his wedding, an event he could not face shortly after he shot himself. Yikes. Okay, so he was like in some sort of marriage arrangement. And uh, he couldn't handle living a lie for the rest of his life, so he went ahead and offed himself. The soldier bequeathed his private papers to Hirschfeld, along with a letter. The thought that you could contribute to a future when the German fatherland will think of us in more just terms, he wrote, sweetens the hour of death. Hirschfeld would be forever haunted by this needless loss. The soldier had called himself a curse fit only to die because of the expectations of the heterosexual norms, reinforced by marriage and law, made no room for his kind. These heartbreaking stories Hirschfeld wrote in the sexual history of the World War bring before us the whole tragedy. In Germany, what fatherland did they have and for what freedom were they fighting? In the aftermath of this lonely death, Hirschfeld left the medical practice and began a crusade for justice that would alter the course of queer history. Yeah, so Weimar. Weimar, Germany. Uh, apparently it was like a uh, ultra-Jewish town or city and uh, transgenderism was running wild there and uh hitler got a got a, a line on that and was like Ugh, let's just totally uh eliminate that well at first he offered them you know to immigrate somewhere else he offered that to all the jewish people but many countries were available to take them as well but they didn't want to leave and they didn't want to go and that was uh what basically began the war all right, let's check it out. Hirschfeld sought to specialize in sexual health, an area of growing interest. Many of his predecessors and colleagues believed that homosexuality was pathological, using these new theories from psychology to suggest it was a sign of mental ill health. Hirschfeld, in contrast, argued that a person may be born with characteristics that did not fit into heterosexual or binary categories and supported the idea that a third sex, Greschlecht, existed naturally. Hirschfeld proposed the term sexual intermediaries for non-conforming individuals, Included under this umbrella were what he considered situational and constitutional homosexuals, a recognition that there is often a spectrum of bisexual practices, as well as what he termed transvestites. This group included those who wished to wear the clothes of the opposite sex, and those who were, from the point of view of their character, should be considered as the opposite sex. One soldier with whom Hirschfeld had worked described wearing women's clothing as the chance to be a human being at least for a moment. He likewise recognized that these people could be either homosexual or heterosexual, something that is frequently misunderstood about transgender people today. Yeah, or autistic. So he included uh, in that group those with no fixed gender in today's concept of gender fluid or non-binary identity. So this doctor was ahead of his times with regards to labeling uh, these people with different mental illnesses. Because like, if you think that life on Earth is all about like sex and desire and fulfilling that, then you're 100% incorrect. Life on Earth is about 
procreation and survival. That's it. And sex, the desire and pleasure of sex, is an uh, instrument, basically, that God put into it to make us more inclined to do it. Not just sit there and, uh, you know, pleasure yourself all day. Like, is that normal? I don't think so. Anyway, so there you have it. It all started in Germany, and Hitler tried to stop it, and uh, guess what? Didn't work. And the Jews started it, apparently, which is very interesting. DOJ indicts doctor who exposed the barbarism of gender-affirming care. Ethan Heim blew the whistle on Texas Children's Hospital illegal child sex change program. Now he's being prosecuted. A few years ago, Texas Children's Hospital made no secret of its support for change to medicine. Its doctors proudly administered puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and other medical interventions to children who self-identified as trans. Then the tone shifted. In the face of public pressure, CEO Mark Wallace announced that he was shutting down the gender clinic. Uh, but doctors at the hospital included Richard Ogden, Roberts, David Paul, and Christy Ryland never stopped. The public would not have known if not for the courageous surgeon, Ethan Heim, who felt morally obligated to expose the subterfuge. He contacted me about how the hospital had lied about terminating the transgender medicine program and that doctors were in fact continuing to perform sex change procedures on children as young as 11. The story rocketed across the world. The hospital immediately went into the defensive. Within a week, Texas legislators passed a bill conforming, sorry, confirming that transgender medical procedures for minors were illegal. But the story also attracted attention from another powerful source, federal prosecutors. The Department of Justice has not shied away from targeting targeting political opponents of the Biden administration, former President Trump, conservative school board protesters, persons praying outside the abortion clinics, and now doctors who dissent from transgender ideology. On the morning in June 2023 that Heim was to graduate from Texas Children's Hospital's residency program, federal agents knocked on his door. that identified him as a potential leaker, presumably through forensic examination of the hospital's computer system. Shortly thereafter, Assistant U.S. Attorney Tina Ansari began threatening him with prosecution. Now Ansari had made good on those threats. Earlier this week, U.S. Marshals appeared at Haim's home and summoned him to court to face indictment on four felony counts of violating HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A. His initial appearance is next Monday, where he will learn more about the charges against him. According to one of Haim's attorneys, Marcella Burke, he is anxious to get to trial to get his side of the story told. She is confident that this will result in the correct decision being made. For my own part, I can confirm that nothing in the information provided to me identified any individual. All the documents were, in fact, carefully redacted. So I guess the HIPAA uh, legislation is like you're not allowed to dox anybody, uh, their home, address, their names, anything like that, medical history, then you'll get in trouble. So they're going to try and light him up for uh, telling the world that people were lopping and chopping children illegally unbelievable and this is where we live uh there was one thing the doj attacked a prison uh in texas as well perhaps arkansas that wouldn't uh, affirm a prisoner with gender reassignment surgery they're like no we're not going to do that we're not giving him medicine he's a prisoner he doesn't have all this freedom like that and they're like it's a right he has a right to uh gender transformation anyway Whatever. Mexico says bird flu patient died of chronic disease, not a virus. So the WHO, uh, yeah, you better retract that story. We covered it on Friday. A man who contracted bird flu in Mexico died due to chronic diseases and not the virus. He was 59. We covered this and it was kind of like, eh, not good. First person to get H1, or sorry, H2N5 dies. Yikes. Earlier this week, the World Health Organization reported the first laboratory confirmed human case of the infectious infection A. H5N2, avian influenza in Mexico. In a Friday press conference in Geneva, WHO spokesman Christian Leitemeyer described the man's case as a multifactorial death and noted that experts were still investigating whether he was infected by someone or by contact with animals. So yeah, they went ahead and they were like, uh, first person to die of bird flu, everyone, let's go ahead, let's lock it down, let's get the vaccines uh, out of clinical trials, because that's where they are, they're already in clinical trials now. Um, elections coming up, what's happening here? The diseases were long-term and, ca and caused conditions that led to the failure of several organs. Yeah, so it's like, you know, if he caught the flu, he probably would have died. The man had chronic kidney, kidney disease, diabetes, and arterial hypertension over the past 14 years, according to health officials. Yeah, so he did not die of bird flu. There you have it. All right, so what's going on? We were talking about all these anomalous uh, climate change things. Well, here's a guy 
uh, Into Thin Air, at Into Thin Air on Twitter, breaking major Antarctic anomaly update. He's been covering this down in the Antarctic, uh, these uh, geomagnetic anomalies, and right after they happen, apparently there's all kinds of craziness. Waves of energy already breaking off Africa and heading toward the United States ahead of hurricane season. Please share. So yeah, let's get a quick look at exactly what's happening here. We got a good one for you. Not only did we see the Antarctic anomaly again, but it was followed by a major devastating weather event in another part of Africa. You're looking at video from Algeria right now, which took place yesterday. Wait till you hear this. All right, my friends, welcome back. It is June 5th, 2024, and yesterday, 24 hours ago, we had a small pop-up of the Antarctic anomaly, which proves they have not fixed this yet, but they are able to remove it now because it is gone. It began at 8 a.m. on the 4th, went through the 11th, and disappeared by 2 p.m., and it looked exactly like this, the one we saw from May 9th, which could have began around the 6th or 7th, which would be one month ago to the day moves through 2 p.m. and then 5 p.m. and then I believe by 8 p.m. it is gone. So the same exact thing happened yesterday. We had an Antarctic anomaly, and you're not going to believe what happened after that. Within hours of the Antarctic anomaly, we had multiple large earthquakes by some familiar places. Twice already, while we've had the anomaly, we've had buoys go off in this area near western Chile. This earthquake, a 5.5, was 19 hours ago. So right after the anomaly, we had a small group of quakes 22 hours ago. So even closer to when the anomaly anomaly went off the Easter Island region, a very important place as far as Earth energy. And then we had just a few hours ago a 5.5 downgraded from a 5.9 three hours ago by the South Sandwich Islands. And then take a look at this. We had a swarm in South Africa 14 hours ago. Okay, so what this guy's talking about is that there's uh, geomagnetic uh, energy eruptions that uh, he believes are correlated with different uh, events that are happening. So uh, Chile had the largest earthquake in recorded history, 9.5. And the way the Richter scale works is that a 1 uh, base level, not very much, 2 is 10 times what a 1 is, and then a 3 is 10 times what a 2 is. I thought it was double, but apparently it's 10x. So there you have it. Something to keep an eye on there with regards to that. All right, so check it out. If you guys are interested in this, this guy dedicates his life to watching the energy anomalies across the globe and reporting on it into thin air. Very interesting stuff there. All right, moving right along, what do we have? Boeing Air Canada jet flames shoot out during takeoff, forces emergency landing. Good Lord. All right, so we've got Boeing. They just tried to land uh, on the International Space Station. Had a bunch of helium leaks. I think they did dock. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll cover that shortly. Let's have a quick look at this. Oof. All right, so uh, Air Canada released a statement on the incident acknowledging they did have an engine issue on this plane while noting the engine itself wasn't on fire, despite how it looked. They write, our pilots are highly skilled professionals, well-trained to safely manage such incidents, and in this case, this situation was quickly stabilized as per our standard procedures, and the aircraft landed normally. They say the passengers were able to deplane safely. Yeah, so uh, heads up, riding on those Boeings, doors flying off, tires exploding. Yikes. And uh, yeah, they tried to launch this rocket several times and aborted like minutes before. Literally like sweat pouring off of the astronauts. <laughs> Is this thing going to make it? And then once they were up into uh, orbit, before they docked with the International Space Station, there was helium leaks all over the gaff. Well, uh, it did end up docking, despite all of these uh, these hiccups, we'll call them. Uh, yeah, first crewed test to the International Space Station is experiencing helium leaks ahead of docking Thursday afternoon. Yeah, but it got there, so all the astronauts are safe. Will it make it back? Yeah, I don't know. How are they going to get back? Are they going to use the same rocket? Are they just going to float down? Anyway, perhaps they're going to need Tesla to help them out with that. Uh, distributor of pedo lives matter. Okay, here we go. Lives matter. Lives matter. And this is where it degrades into like this pedophilia, also known as maps. They reorganized it and said pedophilia is too hurtful to this uh, group of people. They need to be uh, included in the diversification and equality and inclusion. So we're not going to call them pedophiles anymore. 
we're going to call them maps, minor attracted persons. So uh, one of these sick people was uh, handing out material. A 35-year-old Spring resident has been sentenced for distributing, receiving, and possessing child sexual abuse material, announced U.S. Attorney Alamardar S. Hamdani. Oscar Berrios pled guilty November 30th, 2023. U.S. District Judge Alfred Bennett has now sentenced Berrios to 144 months for the distribution and receipt of child pornography counts. Uh, and 120 months for the possession of child pornography count, respectively. They will run concurrently for a total of 144-month term of imprisonment. In handing down the prison terms, the court noted Barrios violated a position of trust as a father with a minor children in the household. Barrios was further ordered to pay $20,000 in restitution to the victims and will serve five years... What? Five years life on supervised release following completion of his prison term. During that time... He will have to comply with numerous requirements designed to restrict his access to children and the internet. Barrios will also be ordered to register as a sex offender. Absolutely. He distributed and received child pornography on multiple messaging applications such as Kick and Discord. He participated in chat rooms including one named Peter Lives Matter where members engage in trading child pornography. Disgusting. Like, find them all and just burn them. In these chat rooms, well, if not, then God's going to sort them out anyway. There's lots of millstones up there in heaven just waiting at the pearly gates when you get judged, the final judgment. During a search of his electronic device, a lot of forces uncovered 66 videos and one image of child pornography. Various will remain in custody pending transfer to U.S. Bureau of Prisons. And uh, hopefully, well, I shouldn't say hopefully because I don't wish any ill will upon anybody. But, uh, you know, typically what happens to these people in jail is they get unalived. All right, gender identity, sexual orientation, and the 2024 election. Yeah, this seems to be a big divide. Voters who support Joe Biden and Donald Trump have wide differences across a broad range of issues related to gender identity and sexual orientation. Trump supporters overwhelmingly say a person's gender is determined by the sex they were assigned with at birth. Yeah, you know, you know, you have a penis that you can impregnate a woman. You are a woman, you become impregnated. It's the purpose of life, procreation. A majority of Biden supporters by a, a less one-sided margin say someone can be a man or a woman even if that is different from their sex at birth. So you have the choice. You know, you can be this, you can be that, be whatever you want. And if you don't affirm them, they'll kill themselves. But studies say they'll likely to kill themselves even more so after the surgery. Biden supporters also are far more comfortable than Trump supporters with people using the pronouns they or them to describe themselves. I do not like that. Uh, I like grammar. I like understanding things. I don't like having to guess or assume things or have to ask people like, oh, excuse me, um, individual, how may I refer to you? I'd rather just avoid you at all costs because you're clearly just like a narcissist. Views of gender identity. Most voters say gender is determined by sex assigned at birth. Okay, we have all voters and then uh, determine at birth can be determined from sex assigned at birth okay so whatever way they were this is believe you can change believe you can't biden supporters are very much for it and trump supporters are not they are against it interesting all right nearly two-thirds of registered voters 65 percent say whether a person is a man or woman is determined by the sex assigned to them at birth that's general that's everybody republican or independent undecided democrat and about a third, 34%, say whether someone is a man or a woman can be different from the sex at birth. So the majority says this is all insanity, and 33% of people are like, of course you can, because I know people, and like I don't want to be uh, virtue signaling, everything's okay, just everything's fine, life is fine. 9 in 10 Trump supporters and about 4 in 10 Biden supporters say sex at birth determines if someone is a man or woman. All right, so uh, differences of opinions on gender identity among Biden supporters among Trump supporters. Yeah, so there you have it. Uh, check it out. All voters, 65. Trump supporters are 90 against. Biden, 34. Black and white, big difference. White people are totally against it. Black people, uh, more. Hispanic, totally against it. Asian, leaning towards the choice. Interesting, but there is an asterisk there. I wonder what that's all about. Estimates for Asian voters are representative of English speakers only. Liberals. Liberal Asians. 
Nearly two thirds of black voters who support Biden say gender is determined by a person's sex assigned at birth. That compares to 46% of Biden's Hispanic supporters and smaller shares of his white and Asian supporters. Yeah, so here's the truth. Most people disagree with this. Israeli military rescues four hostages and uh, thankfully they did because I'm not sure how many are there now. There's no determinable number of how many have survived or are alive. There's even infants over there. It's absolutely horrific. And anyone who's supporting Palestine is supporting a terrorist organization who takes hostages. And uh, yeah, you're sick. Hostages have been abducted from the Nova Music Festival on October 7th and have been transferred to a hospital in Israel in good medical condition, thank the Lord. Uh, Israeli security forces rescued four hostages, among them Noah Argamani, the face of October 7th's abductees during a daytime raid in central Gaza. On Saturday, in an operation, enclave officials say killed scores of Palestinians. Hamas. Okay. The rescued hostages are Agamani, 26, Al Mogmir Jan, 21, Andre Kozlov, 27, and Shlomi Ziv, 40, according to a statement issued by the Israeli Defense Forces, the Israeli Security Authority, and the Israeli police. They were among those kidnapped by Hamas during the Nova Music Festival on October 7th. They were transferred to the Sheba Tel Hashomer Medical Center in near Tel Aviv, where authorities say they are in good medical condition. The United States provided intelligence and support of the operation. Thank you, U.S. Uh, the rescuers took place amid an attack on the central Gaza town of Nusrat, home to a refugee camp in the community where the four hostages had been stashed, according to the Israeli Defense Force. Yeah, the Hamas terrorists are hiding these uh, people in tunnels, under hospitals, in encampments and stuff like that to try and minimize uh, casualties, uh, hopefully, like, you know, like, but guess what? Israel's like, we're not playing games with this anymore, okay? We're all going to eliminate you, and you're disgusting for taking hostages, and you're disgusting for hiding them in amongst your civilians, and you're disgusting for stealing all the aid, and you're disgusting for supporting Palestine's government, which are clearly terrorist organization. Come on! Anyway, this is why it's so important to hate Hamas and love Israel. Look at this moment. Absolutely beautiful. I can't imagine the horror that that poor young lady experienced while being in, uh, uh, abducted by these awful humans in Hamas. Well, thankfully you're home with your father. I'm sure he's quite happy. And I uh, hope you can overcome the trauma that you've uh, endured. Concern over AI rises in adult entertainment. Yikes. Well, we talked in uh, China. A bunch of girls are like totally getting all up in the AI boyfriends and forgetting about real men because they can talk to these things. They understand them. They remember what was talked to them. Uh, they don't forget all the important things like birthdays and you know, favorite colors, whatever. So yeah, the Chinese women seem to be turning more towards AI than physical. Well, later this month, people in Berlin will be able to book an hour with an AI sex doll as the world's first cyber brothel rolls out the services following a test phase. And what's going on in Germany? How come they're at the cutting age of all this sexual deviancy? Hitler was trying to shut that down. I'm not saying anything good about that guy. I'm not saying anything like that. But hey, he was trying to clean it up a little bit. Customers will be able to interact verbally with the AI dolls as well as physically. Many people feel more comfortable sharing private matters with a machine because it doesn't judge, says Philip Fusenegger, founder and owner of Cybrothel. Previously, there was significant interest in a doll with a voice actress where users could only hear the voice and interact with the doll. Now there's an even greater demand for interacting with artificial intelligence. It's just one of many ways that generative Generative AI is being used by the adult entertainment business. Analysis by Split Metrics revealed that AI companion apps reached 225 million downloads in the Google Play Store. I would expect more app developers to take note of this trend and look at ways this category can be further innovative and monetized, said Split Metrics general manager Thomas Krebernegg. AI companions can be lucrative, says Misha Rykov, privacy researcher at Mozilla's Privacy Not Included Guide. Given that most of the chatbots are charging fees and core technology has been developed elsewhere, such as OpenAI, it looks like a high margin business. Also, these apps collect personal data and often share it with third parties like advertisers, a tried and true business model. And there is an AI image or robot. I have no idea. Carrie McKierney says we need to know about the data set that sex bots. So apparently it's a real human. 
And but the merger of AI and adult entertainment business has set off alarm bells. One problem lies in the bias inherent in generative AI, which produces new content based on the data of which it has been trained. There is a risk that retrograde gender stereotypes about sex and pleasure get encoded into sex chatbots, says Dr. Kerry McKerney, senior research fellow at the Louverhome Center for Future. It's crucial that we understand what kinds of data sets are used to train sex bots. Otherwise, we risk replicating ideas about sex that demean female pleasure and ignore sex that exists outside of heterosexual intercourse. Yeah, so let's wake up these robots with gender ideology and get them all in it so everyone can have a piece of the pleasure pie. Disgusting. All right, Macron here with the big old gaping wide mouth. Macron dissolves French Parliament after getting thrashed by Le Pen's national rally at European elections. French President Emmanuel Macron has dissolved the national parliament following his party's thrashing by Marine Le Pen's national rally in the European elections on Sunday. The nation will now face domestic elections, with opinion polling showing the right-wing party in the lead. The next presidential elections are scheduled for 2027. There you have it. So, uh, yeah. They talk about Gert Wilders. They called his party extreme right wing when he's not. He's like center right, if anything. And uh, yeah, just go look it up. Gert Wilders in, uh, uh, was it Denmark or Amsterdam? I can't remember. And uh, they're like labeling this guy a uh, complete right wing. They're like trying to sway the vote. They're like far right. He's so far out there. He's like into like all the crazy stuff. Not like us liberals who are not into crazy stuff. All the stuff we do is totally normal. We're just going to shut down the world, blame it on climate change, shut down the farmers. We're going to go ahead and let everyone be whatever they want and have sex with whoever they want, whether it's a robot, whatever, dogs, it will be happening soon. And MAPS, of course. MAPS is next. Literally, I seen a flag the other day. It was the rainbow flag, and it had like a man next to a man, a woman next to a woman, and then it had a tall man next to a little man. And I was like, huh? Oh, I was like, they're bringing in the maps. They're literally trying to normalize this. Anyway, the pendulum is swinging right. New York study identifies genetic link between inflammatory bowel disease and Parkinson's disease. Yeah, we, we talked about this before. Uh, so, yeah, it's all about your gut microbiome. Genetic connections between the chronic condition inflammatory bowel disease and incurable Parkinson's disease, according to research in the ICANN School of Medicine, Sinai. Medical Center in New York, the significant discovery just published in the journal Genome titled Landscape of Rare Genetic Variation Associated with Inflammatory Bowel Disease and Parkinson's Disease Comorbidity highlighted the potential for joint therapeutic strategies to target these two disabling diseases. Yeah, so if you have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, you might end up with uh, Parkinson's disease, some sort of gastrointestinal inflammation. Look out, risk damage to the digestive system could also cause problems in your brain. But that's not all, people. Study reveals connection between gut bacteria and Alzheimer's. So not only Parkinson's, where like you have like some sort of like shaking and stuff, but Alzheimer's, where you completely lose your memory, even dementia. So your gut bacteria is totally important, people. Your diet is the number one thing. Uh, stop eating processed foods, ultra-processed foods. Check out a couple episodes back. That stuff is terrible. But American's government says it's okay. Get that Big Mac and don't you worry about your health. All right, and this is uh, Pride, okay? I know, like, the title uh, was kind of like, oh, is he going to attack the homosexual community? No, he's not. This is Pride, okay? When you think you're the best and you think you're going to win and you're trying to tell everyone and show off, that's Pride. Check this person out, just totally screwing up. Yeah, slowing down. I'm a winner! No. Huh? Look at the face. Oh, no. Defeat. Anguish. You want to know why that was so rough on her? Do you want to know why? That was a 20 kilometer speed walking race. And like literally five feet away from getting third place, it would have been a bronze medal finish. This lady goes ahead and celebrates and you can see in her face that's what it feels like to be a loser okay people and uh i want to thank you all for tuning in and a special thank you to my number one sig tig rowan trap if you stuck around to the end happy birthday sigma tiger signing off <laughs>